Hey everyone, so in the last video I talked about how my redesign kind of failed and I need to kind of go back to the drawing board to figure out a better design of how I can build out this NFT magic system. The main issue with the previous design is that I would need to have a really expensive machine with a lot of cores and threads to be able to process these images or create these images at a rapid pace. So I decided that I'm going to abstract the worker or extract the worker and put it on Amazon, right? So Amazon has a service called Lambda, which is really great for doing asynchronous work in parallel. So I'm gonna put all of those workers on a Lambda and basically process some batch events. So I'm gonna start off with showing you this high level diagram. I hope this stuff doesn't bore you all. I think it's really important to understand the higher level before you dive into the nitty gritty and implementation details. So I'm gonna start with this diagram, which is kind of refined from the last video. And then I'm just going to kind of talk about the code and show you some Amazon stuff. So before I do that, be sure to click that subscribe button and bell icon if you want to get notified for more videos of this series. And also press that like icon before you continue on to help my channel grow if you enjoy watching my content. So let's just start here. A user is going to upload a zip. So let's just kind of walk you through the UI. I have all this stuff deployed to a URL here. And I can go ahead and upload a zip that has some configuration that says, hey, I need to generate a thousand NFT images. So if I click upload, that's actually going to upload the zip to this DigitalOcean virtual machine, which is running an API. So if I go over to that API, you can see that it's actually making a collections directory, unzipping the file, getting the config, and then it's calling the workers, right? So it's kind of chunking up the 1,000 NFTs into chunks of 100. So like you can imagine it's 10 events, each saying I need to process 100 different images. So that is where the Lambda comes in. It's basically sending all these events over um, to the Lambda layers. I kind of forgot to talk about this. It's, it's first uploading the zip here of the layers so that these Lambdas can actually use it. But it's sending off 10 events to these Lambdas saying, hey, I need you to create 100 NFTs. Here are their DNA configurations. And then the Lambda is going to fetch the Lambda zip, the layer zip, I mean. And that is going to know the input images. And it's going to basically use the events that came over, figure out what layers to combine together, and then write it to a canvas, and then kind of after it's done doing all those 100 images, it zips them up and it pushes that zip back to S3. So if I go to this S3 bucket, um, it'll actually be empty because I actually clear out the bucket when it's done because I don't want to have to be charged for keeping these items around. But just note that this is the bucket where stuff is being stored and then when it's all done, it kind of deletes all those items. And the main reason I'm using S3 is just because it's super cheap to store stuff. Some of these zips can get pretty big, like the final outcome of a 10,000 NFT zip can be about a gig for 400 by 400 pixels. So just keep that in mind. The uh, S3 bucket is really great for just storing stuff. And I'm using it as like an ephemeral storage right now so I can store something and throw it away. But when everything is done, like when all the workers are done, you can see here inside of the digital ocean box, it's fetching all of those chunk zips. It's extracting all those and then it's combining them all to a single larger zip. So that's basically what this is doing is downloading the zip from S3 and then it's archiving all those. So then it's like writing all these to a file or to a folder, and then it's archiving all those. And then it basically sends that back to the user, which is what we're seeing on this line, line six, sends it back to the user. And then we saw that pop up down here in the downloads. So with doing this approach, I was able to get it to basically do 10,000 NFTs in about three minutes, which is about half the time it took to do um, on the other approach. So it's a huge performance benefit. We cut it the time down in half. And then also the cost is probably going to be minimal. So if we go to the, um, the NFT magic worker and look at the monitor, we can see that we got a bunch of events to kind of process these batches, I'm calling them, or these chunks. So going to this Lambda, you can see in the last hour, we've gotten about 10 invocations. That's kind of representing the 10 chunks. And those take about 11 seconds to run. So it's able to process 10, or sorry, it's able to process 100 NFTs in about 10 seconds. And what I can do is I can always make this chunk size smaller if I want to speed up that process. But right now there's another kind of spot in the whole chain of events, which is taking quite a lot of time. And that's when I actually build out the final large zip file. That's taking a lot of time. And I need to kind of further investigate, is this taking time because I'm downloading a bunch of stuff from S3? Or is it because I'm kind of running this on a, a weak machine that doesn't have enough resources to kind of make these all into a zip? So I do want to talk about some things, some hurdles that I encountered when trying to do this big refactoring. The first thing is when trying to deploy these worker lambdas, 
I needed to create a Lambda layer because Node Canvas, that's like what I'm using behind the scenes to create the images and put them together. Um, if I go and try, if you try to deploy that to Lambda, it just doesn't work because it's missing some shared library. So I had to make a Lambda layer, which luckily there's already a person out there. If I go to my readme here, luckily this guy already kind of did all the heavy lifting. He created a Docker file, which kind of creates the Lambda layer zip itself um, using Node 14. And I basically just downloaded this repo, I ran the Docker file, and then I created a Lambda layer using this. What this layer has is it has all the .so files that you need to be able to run Node Canvas. Behind the scenes, it needs like a bunch of shared libraries. So I had to create a Lambda layer first to allow my Lambda to actually like be able to run Node Canvas. And another hurdle I ran into, just to kind of share that, is that for some reason this still wasn't working. In order to get this working, I had to go and add an additional environment variable. So if I go to environment variables, I had to add this LD preload and point it to this directory. I don't know why this fixed the issue. I didn't really spend too much time figuring it out, but this was one another hurdle that I kind of ran into to get this stuff working. But after I did that, I was able to get the Node Canvas library running on a Lambda, which is pretty good. Another thing I needed to do was basically, since I am running and building all this stuff on a MacBook, um, Lambda does not use the same uh, binary. So like whenever you do an NPM install, Sometimes you might have a package which is doing like C++ bindings behind the scene. And that is ex exactly what this Canvas library is doing. It's using like Node GYP to bind some JavaScript code to C++, C++ behind the scenes. So if I were to do an npm install and just kind of zip up this folder, that's not going to work on Lambda. What I need to do instead is create a Docker file using like Node 14 to make sure it's still a Linux instance. And then I can do an npm install inside this Docker container. I can zip up this package and then deploy that as a Lambda. So yeah, just a couple of hurdles to get this all going. And then of course, just getting this all running was kind of a pain because I also wanted to get this to be able to run locally while also being able to run like in a deployed environment. So right now I can just set node environment to like development and it's going to connect to a local running S3 bucket. Uh, which is basically allowing me to do faster iteration and testing locally without having to touch anything on Amazon. Uh, once you start integrating more with Amazon, you'll realize how hard it is to mock out some of these services. So luckily there are some things like um, S3 server that exists that you can mock out the S3 bucket. And let me just show you some of this code. So the main changes, so when the person uploads the zip, what I'm doing is I'm basically taking that zip file and putting it in that FT magic files bucket, which you can see here which is going to be used later on by the workers to know what layer images I can actually use. And then I call generate NFTs. I'm not going to kind of walk you through all this code, but the main gist of it is I'm calling Lambda here. So if I'm running in production mode, I'm just going to invoke the Lambda function like so. And that's going to pass all the information that that Lambda needs to be able to patch a, a process a batch of like a hundred um, NFTs basically. So I pass it like, a chunk which will have a hundred NFT layer setups and then also like the chunk ID which we use to kind of do console logs and also to create the zips and some other stuff. Um, and then like I mentioned I wanted this all to work locally so if we're not running in production instead of calling a lambda I basically just import that handler here and I just call it um, I invoke it like exactly how I should. So there's a, this is a kind of like a little hack. I'm not really impressed with this code right here. I could clean it up and I can also clean up a lot of this code. A lot of this code is so messy. But once that worker basically fires off on Amazon, what that worker is doing is it is going to, let me go to the worker. I think I'm on the wrong folder. Let me go to index here. There should be a handle function. So this worker basically gets that event that was called in or passed in, and it's going to download that same layer zip that the user uploaded. So every worker, if you have like 10, 20 workers, it's gonna download that zip and then it can know what images to use to build up the NFTs. And I create a bunch of like directories inside of the temp workspace. When you're messing with Lambda, you can, you can kind of store stuff in a slash TMP directory. But if you're doing it locally, you have to do it like wherever you want. So keep that in mind. I had to like do this little hack to make sure that if I'm running production, the place I'm storing these zips and archiving these zips uh, is from the slash temp location. I think you get like 50 or 250 megabytes of disk space on a Lambda. I think it might be 50. But yeah, anyway, I basically grab that layers image and then I do some logic to create all the NFTs. Um, and then finally what I do is I basically create the chunk zip and push that back into the bucket. 
And then, uh, yeah, when all this stuff is done, I basically do some cleanup to make sure this stuff isn't sitting around still. And then going back to the API, that's the thing that's actually downloading all of these and zipping them. So if I go to this route, you'll see that basically when I'm done generating all the NFTs, it's going to then archive all those NFTs, which I think just basically extracts them all into a directory um, and then zips them together. Actually, this one just archives it. So that basically archives all those un, um, unzipped NFT files and puts it into one giant NFT um, zip file. And then that sends it back to the user. And then finally, when that's all done, I just do some cleanup to make sure I delete all of the files from S3 because I don't need them anymore. I don't want to be charged for keeping those around. And then also I clean up some workspace um, directories and files. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at now. There are some issues in terms of like, why does it take this API so long to zip up a gig of files? It takes around like, um, like a minute or so. And I think that's kind of slow. So I need to kind of investigate if there's a way to speed that up or what's causing that slowdown. But yeah, hopefully this, um, this little update was fun for you all to kind of watch. I know it went kind of fast, but if you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up. Also leave me a comment below if you have a different feature or if you've tried using my application, just give me some feedback. I'm just looking for any ideas to make this a better application. And like always, again, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and bell icon because I'm going to be publishing other videos of this series that can kind of show you my progress I'm making along the way on this project. Cool. Have a good day and happy coding.